Welcome back to Royal Mining Solutions. We are continuing with our tutorial series on geological databases in SEPAC. Uh, in the previous tutorial, we learned how we can create a new database. Uh, we created an access database using SEPAC. So in this tutorial, what we are going to learn is how we import data from our text files or CSV files where we have stored our drill data, how we can import it and populate our newly created database. So hopefully you enjoy. Don't forget to add comments if you have any in the comment section. Okay. I have uh, my profile. I'm using the geology database profile. Uh, so you have to activate your geology database profile. And my working directory, I've set this one here. Just named it draw data. So you connect your database that you are using. This is my tutorial database that we created in our previous uh, tutorial. And what we are going to do is you come here, databases, and select import. You want to import data into the tutorial uh, database. I'll click apply and I'll click apply again. You are prompted with this window to select database tables which you want to include in format right so we said you shouldn't worry about the translation and the styles tables sepak will do that for you you are just concerned with the color survey as in geology and you are going to include all of them and uh the delimiter here i'm just going to go for this comma and uh okay that's okay I'll click apply. You have this window presented to you to select fields which you want to include in format. Basically, what you'll be doing here is to tally the columns that, sh that you're going to be defining here with the columns uh, which they correspond to in your uh, text files, the, these fields. So we will start with the caller. I will open my caller table here and I will just drag it a little bit here. I just want to see over here, right? So I have my OID right here. And if I come here to my caller, I have my OID column one. Local north, okay, my Y column two, my X column three, my Z column four. I have my maximum depth, column 5, and wall type, um, column 6. We don't have a wall path, so I'll just put a 0 here, then I'll untick this box. This is column 6, and we are done with our color table. We move on to the survey table. I'm going to open the survey table, which is here. And uh, for the survey, I have my OID, column 1, my depth, column 2, my deep, column 3, and my azimuth, column 4. Okay, it's already telling, so we are good to go. I move on to the assay. I am going to open my assay table, which I have right here. And uh, I'm going to make sure it tallies. Okay, let me do this and I'll open my assay table and put it right here. Um, I have my OID, this is my OID, one, symbol ID, two, that's two, depth from three, depth to four, average lithium number five, and symbol type number six. So yes, we are good to go. Oh, okay, it's, it's telling. We are left with the geology, so I'll just come to, <coughs> sorry, my geology uh, table, the CSV file. I have my OID on number one, column one, right? Meters from, okay, I don't have symbol ID, so I'll put a zero here, and I'll nullify this one. Um, okay, let's come back to our geology. Meters from, okay, we say OID number one, we have it there. Meters from number two, 
here I have my depth form number two. So we have to put a two here and we continue. This is my geology. I have my depth two number three. So I'll put a three here and this grammatical lib comes last, last field number four, the lithology. And we are done. We're not worried about the styles and the translation. So just click apply. You are presented with uh, this window. We are going to be performing overlapping symbol check. So you make sure this box is ticked. And uh, we are allowing a maximum number of errors of 50. Here what we are going to do is... Oh, okay. Did I do this before? You have to select the... We have to provide here uh, the file path for the location of the file you want to use. Say for the caller, I'm going to select the text file here. I have my real data in the working directory that I have activated, which is why I automatically have the text files here presented to me. So I will just click caller text file.csv. I'll click apply the survey. Okay, the survey. Click the survey. Click the assay. Click the geology. Okay. And for the load type, say that you are going to insert, you are going to update, or you are going to do both. Okay. For in this case, since we don't have anything in our database, we are doing it for the first time. We're just going to insert and update. Okay, so when you've done this, I think we should be good to go. You click apply and and check here yeah, status window. Okay. <clears throat> uh, okay. Let me check first with my message window in SEPAC here. It tells me what is our reading records and the likes. Um, two errors for the geology. Okay, no format for field Z for table geology. Let's let's check here with this file. It describes for me what uh, was really taking place. So there I have it, the notepad file telling me the operation how it took place and the results that we got. First, I have my caller table uh, here. Uh, you, you see why these records were rejected. This one record was rejected and also another one record rejected for my survey and another one record rejected for my assay. And okay, I have two records that were rejected for my geology uh, file. Okay. Well, let's check. Warning, depth two exceeds maximum depth of 14 for this wall. So we have uh, a wall in our, in my, okay, in my data set, I have a wall uh, whose depth two exceeds the maximum depth for that wall. So that's automatically an error. There is the wall ID, I guess. And uh, it's for the geology, the pegmatite. So I have two records rejected. I will tell you, well, I'll show you why the other one was rejected. But uh, fortunately, we have no uh, overlapping symbols that we found here and also here, which means uh, it's good, right? And uh, I'll close this one. So this, this file just helps you to know what's really taking place, right? I'll close this one. And I'll clear this message window. What I'm going to do next is uh, see with you that did we manage successfully to import our data. So right now we're going to open our access database like this. And we'll check the assay table. Wonderful. There you have it, your assay table. Uh, the average lithium grade, the depth form, the depth to... What was our interval here? 51, 51, 52, 52, 53, you see. Uh, which is why the interval tables, you see that is usually associated with real data. 
the whole idea of it here, the same way. So some of those errors, uh, the one record which was being rejected, if you check my text file here, uh, say this assay text file, this first uh, row that I have, it contains what? It contains character, data type, character, 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 right? But when it's being entered into my assay table, first it's going to try to enter that row into this uh, database, into this table, the assay table, and it's going to figure out that we have a character, right? Say for the average lithium, here it says, um, where is my assay? Average lithium, here is character, but it's expecting a real data, a real number with two decimal places. So that's automatically an error. So that's why you're going to be reading errors, uh, one error, one error, one error, which is not uh, your problem at all. You shouldn't worry about that. So you can see we've managed to import our data successfully. There you have it. That's, that's awesome. I will close this. Uh, no, no, no changes there. And I'll clear my window here. Yeah. So we've managed to do that. I hope you are happy to. And if I'm to check my uh, database, I'm going to come here, display drills. And I just want to trace uh, my assay table, the average lithium grade, without any constraints, right? So I'll click apply. You can see this is my my data. These are my drills. They've been traced. Okay, it's not really appealing to, to the eye right now because we haven't done uh, much of the display styles. We haven't done anything on those. So that will bring us to our next tutorial where we are going to be learning how we can uh, trace these drills using different display styles, which will, will be more interesting. So uh, join us in our next tutorial where we will learn uh, more on display styles and don't forget to like this video if you happen to like it of course and to subscribe such that you won't miss any of those uh tutorials which are yet to come and if you have any comments just drop them in the comment section uh we'll chat so bye for now guys thank you so much